to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome. I'm joined by Mr. Blake Arnsdorf. And joining us today, Nick Adkins. Nick, you are known for the Pink Sox, what is it, initiative? Pink Sox movement. Pink cool. Sox yeah. movement. Yeah. Uh, and today, I, I kind of want to pick your brain. sounds doesn't it? It does. <laughs> A little bit. But no, no, no. I, I want to pick your brain about the Pink Sox movement, and I want to also talk about sort of how that relates to human factors. And uh, So you haven't given your talk yet, but we want to kind of get a preview of that and sort of how Pink Sox can kind of... Uh, help us communicate, I guess. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Nick and Blake, for having me over here this morning to do this. Um, where do you want to start? You want me to tell you a little bit about the Pink Sox first to give you a little well, history? Or you want me to just jump right into the this um, diversity and inclusion panel that I'm going to be on tomorrow and what we're so going to be talking about? Let's back up even further and okay. kind of get a sense of who you are for our yeah. listeners. So where yeah. do you come from? What's your background? Let's yeah. get into some of that. Right. So for most of my adult life, I was a healthcare executive in Nashville, Tennessee. I was the CEO of a healthcare company. And then in 2010, I went to this thing called Burning Man for the first time. If you've ever heard of this thing, it's a giant. Most definitely, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Magical thing that happens in a week, uh, for a week in the desert every year in Nevada. 70,000 people from all around the world come to have 70,000 unique experiences. And uh, I came home from Burning Man that first time in 2010 and said, you know what? I'm done. I don't ever want to wear a suit again. I sell the company. I'm, see ya. I'm out and decided to kind of change my life and, and uh, move into more heart space and to kind of get out of my head and to not really worry about managing so much by the numbers and the spreadsheet, but really by just listening to people and connecting. And that's really kind of the genesis of the Pink Sox movement. About three years ago, I was at a conference, a healthcare conference. My background's in healthcare. I was at a healthcare conference in Chicago called HIMSS, which is a big Association for Health IT Professionals. Okay. And that year it was in Chicago and just started giving away pink socks. Now, why pink socks? But let me back yeah. up a little bit. Why so pink I had socks? moved yeah, where does that come from? So I had moved to from from Nashville to Portland, Oregon in 2012. And in April of 12, in June of 12, right after I arrived in Portland, I met a burner who owns a kilt company, makes kilts there in Portland. He said, "Nick, have you ever tried to wear a kilt?" And I said, "No." And he goes, "You want to try one?" I said, "Yes." Because yes is where the fun is. Yes is where the adventure is. If you say no, the story ends, right? You got to have to say yes. So I said yes to the kilt. That was June of 2012. That was also the last time I wore pants. I only wear kilts and I only wear their brand. That seems like a smart move. Yeah, right? And uh, one of the first things, Blake, that that I realized, like immediately when you wear a kilt, is you have to wear fun socks. You can't be that geek that's wearing just, you know, the black dress socks. Your ankles are exposed. Yeah, so you, sure. Yeah, you gotta you gotta come up with something fun. So I there was this company in Portland that sells these fun funky socks at uh, grocery stores and bookstores and you know just all over. And I started just gobbling up all of these crazy socks I could find. I mean, pugs, corgis, T Rexes, Sasquatch, unicorns, cupcakes. You know, you name it. And one of the pairs was a pink pair with these black mustaches, and and that really became the crowd favorite. Every time I noticed that when I would wear the pink ones, I would get the most, you know, whether I was on the train or a plane or standing in line at the grocery store or the post office, I would have people say, hey, I really like those. Those are cool. Out of all of the fun, funky socks, the, these pink ones with the mustaches seem to draw the most, you know, hey, those are cool. So that year in, in 15, 2015, when we went to Chicago, I just packed my little backpack. That's the same little said backpack right there, Exhibit A, with, with socks and came rolling into the conference center of the convention hall in Chicago and I said, the first person that says I like those socks, I'm just going to introduce myself, say, hey, I'm Nick, you know, Blake, Nick. And I'm going to reach in my bag and say, hey, I've got something to give you. And that's what happened. And we started using this hashtag on Twitter, hashtag pink socks, always one word, always plural. And the hashtag took over that conference. It kind of went viral. Hmm, that's said, awesome. Yeah, right? That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. And so it, uh, we had, you know, all these people are coming up like, what's the story with the pink socks? You know, this pink socks guy. So what, what, what? And, um, you know, I didn't give away any business cards that year, which is probably a mistake, but the, the pink socks really took off and, and uh, had a lot of fun at that conference and some other conferences throughout the year we went to. And uh, it just kept going. And now, three and a half years later, we're 40,000 people all around the world just about every country that are enjoying the magic of connection, connecting with people. 
and, and the joy of gifting. So it's always about a gift, a connection that you have with someone that says, oh, I'd like to give you this. And it's never swag. It's never, you know, at the registration desk. It's never in the swag bag or at everybody's right. place. It's always a gift. It's nothing that's earned. It's not an award. It's not a reward. It's simply a gift. It's a token that says, once upon a time, I had a connection with this person, and they gave me this. Yeah, because you're not just gifting them, like, socks, it sounds like. You're gifting them an experience and a connection. That's yeah, really cool. right. Yeah, because what happens, and, and you guys are going to find out as you wear your socks, there is magic in, in the pink socks to have these connections. So you, you will be, like I say, sitting in line or standing in line or at work or here. Somebody's going to comment on them. That's someone that has a story. You know, they, they're, they're wanting to connect with you. They're not wanting to just compliment you on your socks. Because what happens, Blake and Nick and for all of us, is we're so connected in the digital world now that we become disconnected. I mean, you know, we walk down this hallway right here. We'll even go out on the sidewalk. Right. We're going to walk by a lot of people, and nobody's going to look up and say, good morning, or hello, how are you doing? Everybody's down, you know, with their thumbs and their face on their phones. Okay, well, what happens when you don't do that and you go back to just saying, hey, good morning, how's it going? What? People are actually talking to each other again. You make engaging. a connection. You're making a connection. Yeah. And you'll... The first few times you have these connections, your, your first reaction is going to be when somebody says, hey, I like those. Those are cool. Your first reaction is going to be to take a sip of your Starbucks and say thank you and keep on walking. Catch yourself. Turn around and say, wait, wait. This is the universe. I'm it's teeing this up for me. Right? This is exactly <laughs> what Nick said. We've got to go back. I've got to say, hey, I'm Blake. What's your name? And they'll say, oh, I'm Susan or I'm Jake or I'm Sam. How's it going? Guess what? You're going to hear some of the most awesome stories from people who, before that moment, were strangers. And what you're going to hear is, and I hear them all the time, and you're going to hear them too, is you're going to say, like, I really needed to talk to somebody right now. I just found out I've got stage four cancer. My son just went to prison. My daughter just got out of rehab, you know, on and on from complete strangers. And what you're going to learn very quickly is that we're all in this thing together. You know, or somebody may say, you know, I was really thinking about killing myself today, and I was just so lonely, and I really, I'm so glad that you stopped to talk to me. So, question though, yeah, so you, you're gonna, it's it's gonna be magical. You'll see. So, question, like, yeah. how how do you get to that point with a, a stranger, right? You're talking about these really deep things, right? How do you, you? I mean, you have a lot more experience connecting with other people than yeah. either. My, I'm guilty myself of walking down the street and yeah you know looking at my phone yeah but like how do you get to that deep level with with these strangers you're gonna it's you're gonna practice and it gets easier each time and and the real trick of it is nick is to stop and listen they have a story to tell you and if you'll engage if you'll look at them right in the eye just like we're looking right now so like when i give away pink socks to people i always say it's good to see you nick it's good I'm, to see you too, Nick. It's good to see you, Blake. <laughs> right? And so, and, and listen to the words there. It's good to see you is different than it's nice to meet you. Right. It's have two different levels of connection. And all of us are walking through life just wanting to be seen, just as we are right now in this moment. Not where we went to school, not how much money we have in the bank, not where we are in the org chart, what our titles are but just right now in this moment to be seen. There's very, very, very powerful connection pieces in that. And, and if you'll rephrase those words each time, instead of saying, hey, it's nice to meet you, say, hey, it's good to nice, see you. Good to see you. And, and say it with intention. You know, when you look at the person and feel it, and you'll feel it back. It's an exchange. It's, it's, a, it's a big dose of empathy that that's, we all need. Well, I'm glad you brought yeah. up the point of getting past the fact that you're just saying, like, hey, thanks for noticing my socks, right? Because that's, that's what I, my instinct would be. And right. it is, has been in the past. If somebody compliments me on whatever it may be, it's very much thank you, and I kind of, like, continue on my yeah. way. And so you getting to that next point where you can have a meaningful conversation or just provide some kind of, you know, value for both yourself and the other person's life is really right. important. Exactly. And what, you know, and I hate to get, you know, jump to the end of the story here, but... What you're going to find out pretty soon is, you know, once you use the, the magic and the power of the pink socks to help you have these connections, what you're going to discover in the end is it's not really about the pink socks. Yeah. 
Spoilers. Not. Spoilers. <laughs> once upon a time, it was. It will be for you in the beginning. But once you train yourself to connect with people and to be almost ready and willing and open and present to accept that energy exchange that somebody's going to have with you, you'll find that it's really not about the pink socks. It's about you. It's about you. It's about all of us. So, you know, I tell people, you know, some people pink socks aren't, aren't their thing. Find what your thing is to help you engage with people. That's going to make someone walking down the street or sitting next to you engage with you. Maybe it's a fun hat. Maybe it's a fun, funky tie. Maybe it's a button. You know, maybe it's the way you wear your hair. You know, put some, some, beads, put some beads in my beard. You know, what, you what, what is a thing that's going to make somebody look up from their phone and say, hey, that's going to allow you to be seen? Because that's, that's the push button. That's the you're going to wait for somebody to see you. That's your opportunity. That's your invitation to connect with them. That's them saying, hey, I want to connect. Reciprocate, right? Say, it's good to see you too. Yeah. So I, I tell people, look, Nick, we, we, you know, we can't always control governments and politics. But what we can control is how we interact with people one person at a time, one smile at a time. The ripple effect of that, the exponential effect of that energy that goes into the universe by just creating one smile a day, two smiles a day, three smiles. And if I think, you know, there's over 40,000 people in the Pink Sox tribe globally, okay, let's create five smiles a day. That's 10 smiles each day. That's half a million smiles. I mean, just oh, every day, just and growing, right? Yeah, I mean, that's it's, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just like going to gr- keep growing and people are going to yeah, keep like having new experiences yeah. because of it. Yeah. yeah, that's really awesome. So I want to kind of get into the reason why you're here at HFES. So you were invited to kind of talk about the Pink Sox, uh, as well as participate in this diversity panel, right? Yeah. Um, I, at least I think that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Something like that. I hope, I hope so, right? <laughs> Am I really supposed to be here? <laughs> Call security. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so yeah, if you want to just jump into kind of... <laughs> I, I really want to dig into how Pink Sox kind of... I actually made this badge myself. This oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I snuck in here. I want to get into how Pink Sox kind of relates to the topic of he- sure. human factors. Yeah. Um, and it, so can you kind of relate? Absolutely. Yeah, so the panel I'm going to be on in the morning is all about diversity and inclusion, which is one of the things that the organization, HF, yes, is, is um, trying to ramp up and get a little meatier. So there's several panelists. That we have a kind of a diverse background of the panelists that are sitting on this thing. But from, from my purview, from my perspective, and what I think the reason I was invited for the Pink Sox is when I talk about the Pink Sox tribe, it really is a tribe. It's a, it's a global community all around the world. That's not about, it's not about any one company. It's not about any one brand, logo, mission, person. It's, it's really a paradox. It's a community of multiple missions. And so there are groups and organizations, people all around the world that use it to represent different things that they're doing in their world to make the world a better place. Companies that, and, and people that use it to drive awareness for, there's a group in, in the Netherlands that uses it to drive awareness for the work they're doing in dementia care, Alzheimer's. There's a group in the Netherlands, I mean in um, Wales, that uses it for ataxia, which is a rare disease. There's pharmaceutical companies, there's hospitals, there's, there's a group in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, that uses it to um, promote the work they're doing, feeding hungry children, a company called Table NC. Uh, there's a group in India that does it for promoting breast cancer screening awareness for women. On and on and on and on. So it's, it's very diverse, it's very inclusive, and like I say, there's no... There's no invitation to this thing. Everyone is welcome. Um, it's all triggered by a gift, like we said earlier. Right, right. And, um, you know, when, when I look at, we're really big on Twitter. So if you're, if you're not on Twitter, jump on Twitter, follow the hashtag, hashtag Pink Socks. You'll see people all around the world every day doing things. And, oh, they're doing something in London. There's something in Paris. Something's happening in China. Something's going on in Boston today, right now. I mean, it's a celebration of good people doing good things to try to change the world. I mean, when we, on the front of the socks, the label of the socks says, the world is full of good. When you believe it, you see it. Keep doing that. And that's really, you know, I think when, when you talk about inclusion and diversity, and as I said earlier, <clears throat> this sense that we're all in this thing together, you start seeing each other 
as fellow humans, not as us or them, but we, not either or or, but and, that, that no matter what we think our differences are and our politics and you know, even geopolitical regions, we have there, more in common than we, we do. We have more in common. Yeah, we, we get so force-fed <clears throat> in the media and news, which I try to avoid, um, but the message is so, so much fear-based. And the real message is <clears throat> that the world would rather hug you than hurt you. Yeah. But that's not the message we get. But, but if you travel, and I'm sure you guys have traveled abroad, you discover... <clears throat> these people that we think are, you know, want to kill us. No, they're doing the same things we're doing. They're going out to, to dinner with their friends. They're hanging at the pub with their friends. They're watching their kids play football or soccer. They're planting flowers. They're watching their garden grow. They're falling in love. They're having a baby. They're doing the same things that we're doing here in our life. They're not out there plotting how to kill us. You know, I mean, yeah, there may be some people on, on 7 billion people sure, on the planet, yeah. but for the majority of us, we're all just loving, kind humans who see uh, good in the world. And, once you start seeing that, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Just like having connections with people that you're going to have on the bus or the train or walking down the street. It gets easier and easier and easier when you let go of an old conditioning that's fear-based and you move into one that's more love-based that says, you know, let's love more and fear less. That's, no? a, that's a really great message. I, it's a powerful I, topic. <laughs> I'm kind of entranced by your talk right now and am very interested in it. I know we're cutting a little short on time here. You got more than your bargain for in the uh, pink socks. A, a little bit. No, yeah. I, I think it's <laughs> not at okay. all. Couldn't get any more. I think it's great. But um, before we wrap up, I kind of want to talk about sort of what people can do to get involved with the pink socks movement if perhaps they haven't met anybody with pink socks or anything yeah. along those lines. Yep. There's a website, pinksocks.life pinksocks.life go to that website and learn all about us um, there's if you want to receive some socks to gift some socks there's uh, a page that you can get some socks to, to give away there's a couple of videos on there I was fortunate enough to be able to do a TED talk about the pink socks and so if you want the whole story there's a, there's a video on the homepage of pinksocks.life that, there's another video that we, we have pink socks meetups around the world and, and, and we're actually going to have one tonight oh that's wonderful at, um, not not affiliated with this conference, but there's some Pink Socks Philadelphia people. And oh, that's like, awesome. Yeah, so you can search for like whatever city. You can go hashtag Pink Socks, hashtag London, hashtag you know, Pink Socks, hashtag Denver, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're going to be in a town and you want to find your tribe, of cool people to go have a drink or coffee with and just hang out and happy, smiley people who like to give hugs. Right. And, it's, it's, and so that's we're, we're, we're meeting tonight at um, Oscar's Tavern, which is about three blocks from here on Sanson, 15th block of... Of, of Sanson Oscar's Tavern at five o'clock. So there'll be some happy, smiley Philadelphia people that aren't associated with this conference, but live here. But you, go, oh, I want to meet some local sure. Philly Pink Sox folks. That's really the so. only thing they have in common is that they've kind of experienced the Pink Sox thing, and they're geographically close, right? Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. That sounds really That's cool. Wonderful, experience. right? It is fun, and so it and, and people and there's a another video on that that website above the tab one that's at, from Austin, Texas, and it's also from a Pink Sox meetup. And if you want to say, well. What do you do at a Pink Socks meetup? I'd say go watch the first video at PinkSocks.life, and that's that's exactly what we do. It's a bunch of happy, smiley people um, who like to give hugs and 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 a kind of joke. It's like if you've ever read or saw Fight Club back in the day. You know, one of the things about Fight Club, you know, the first first meeting and stuff. Is, this is your first time at Fight Club. You have to fight. <laughs> and what we what we say at, at a Pink Socks meetup. If this is your first Pink Socks meetup. You have to hug. <laughs> That's so, perfect. <laughs> that's a great message and a great thing to end on. Nick, thank you so much for you, uh, Nick. Like, for coming out and talking to us about the Pink Sox stuff. Uh, like you said, uh, pinksocks.life and the hashtag Pink Sox. Yep. All one word, all plural, always yep. plural. Yep. And there's a small little Facebook page under Pink Sox Life as well. But I'd like to say we're mainly on Twitter. It's kind of a Twitter phenomenon. But Great, yeah. and we'll we'll post links to all this stuff yeah. in our in yeah. our description so our listeners can find it. Nick, and I'm, like I'm I'm at Nick is in PDX on Twitter. N i c k i s the letter N P D X. Uh, follow me on Twitter, and um, I promise you, you only see happy happy stuff in my feed. Excellent. Well, <laughs> we like to close out the show by saying it depends because in our field, it always kind of depends on the the human, and I'm sure that kind of the stories depend on on the human as well. So. On the count of three, let's just close this thing out by saying it depends. Ready? Three, two, one. It, it depends! depends.